This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Cold daylight. The girl stared out at the rather ordinary view from Richard's window, astonished, peering wide-eyed at the cars and the buses and the tiny sprawl of shops, a news agents, a baker's, a chemist's and an off-licensed liquor store below them. I'm in London above, she said in a small voice. Yes, you're in London, said Richard. Above what, he wondered. I think maybe you were in shock or something last night. That was a nasty cut on your arm. He waited for her to say something to explain. She glanced at him and then looked back down at the buses and the shops. Richard continued, I, um, found you on the pavement. There was rather a lot of blood. Don't worry she said seriously. Most of the blood was someone else's. She let the curtain fall back. Then she began to unwrap the scarf, now blood-stained and crusted from her arm. She examined the cut and made a face. We're going to have to do something about this, she said. Do you want to give me a hand? Richard was beginning to feel a little out of his depth. I don't really know too much about first aid, he said. Well, she said, if you're really squeamish, you only have to hold the bandages and tie the bits I can't reach. You do have bandages, don't you? Richard nodded. Oh, yes, he said, in the first aid box, in the bathroom, under the sink. And then he went into his bedroom and changed his clothes and wondered whether the mess on his shirt, his best shirt, bought for him by, oh God, Jessica, she would have kittens, would ever come off. The bloody water reminded him of something, some kind of dream he had once had, perhaps, but he could no longer for the life of him remember exactly what. He pulled the plug, let the water out of the sink, and filled it with clean water again, to which he added a cloudy splash of Dettol liquid disinfectant. The sharp, antiseptic smell seemed so utterly sensible and medicinal a remedy for the oddness of his situation and his visitor. The girl leaned over the sink and he splashed warm water over her arm and shoulder. Richard was never as squeamish as he thought he was. Or rather, he was astonishingly squeamish when it came to blood on screen. A good zombie movie or even an explicit medical drama would leave him huddled in a corner hyperventilating, with his hands over his eyes muttering things like, Just tell me when it's over. But when it came to real blood, real pain, he simply got on and did something about it. They cleaned out the cut, which was much less severe than Richard remembered it from the night before, and bandaged it up, and the girl did her very best not to wince in the process. And Richard found himself wondering how old she was, and what she looked like under the grime, and why she was living on the streets, and... What's your name? she asked. Richard, Richard Mayhew. Dick. She nodded, as if she were committing it to memory. The doorbell rang. Richard looked at the mess in the bathroom and the girl and wondered how it would look to a sensible outside observer, such as, for example, Oh, Lord, he said, realizing the worst. I bet it's Jess. She's going to kill me. Damage control. Damage control. Look, he told the girl, you wait in here. He shut the door of the bathroom behind him and walked down the hall. He opened the front door and breathed a huge and quite heartfelt sigh of relief. It wasn't Jessica. It was... what? Mormons? Jehovah's Witnesses? The police? He couldn't tell. There were two of them, at any rate. They wore black suits, which were slightly greasy, slightly frayed. And even Richard, who counted himself among the sartorially dyslexic, felt there was something odd about the cut of the coats. They were the kind of suits that might have been made by a tailor two hundred years ago who had had a modern suit described to him, but had never actually seen one. The lines were wrong, and so were the grace notes. A fox and a wolf, thought Richard, involuntarily. The man in front, the fox, was a little shorter than Richard. He had lank, greasy hair of an unlikely orange colour. 
and a pallid complexion. And as Richard opened the door, he smiled widely and just a fraction too...